In this video, I want to discuss the intermediate value theorem uh, for determining the existence of a root. Okay. All right. So here's a theorem. Okay. It states that if the function is continuous on the closed interval, let's say a b, and k is any number between f of a and f and b, then there is at least one number. Okay. Let's call it c in the interval of a to b, such that the function evaluated at c is equal to k. All right. So let's suppose, in this case, we have a function, okay, that looks, uh, we have a continuous function that does something like this, okay, oops, uh, okay, let's try that again, okay, so now let's define, or let's uh, go ahead and uh, assume that our interval is here, okay, starting here, so we're going to call this A, and over here, this is going to be called B. Okay. All right. So for A, okay, if we evaluate the function at A, okay, we're going to get, right, we get the output here. This is just F of A. And over here, uh, we have B. Okay. Okay, so we have, okay, try and make this straight as possible, but I hope that you, you, you get the picture right. Okay, so somewhere here is f of b. Okay, all right, so I'll touch on that a little bit more, Let's see. Okay, so good enough. Okay, so we have f of, right, so for a, we have f of a, for b, we have f of b. Okay, so there's our interval, okay, and uh, this is our continuous function, okay. So in this situation, I want to talk about uh, this point here. This is, so this is the uh, root of our function, so we're going to call it c. So applying the intermediate value theorem here, so what this says is that uh, since the function is continuous, particularly on this closed interval, it means that uh, there, there exists a point, okay, such that uh, the f uh, this function value, right, at this point, the function at C is going to be zero. And the reason is because F of A, okay, so F of A is below the x-axis, okay? So that means it's negative, okay? So we can write that over here. So f of a is negative. Okay. So that we have. Okay. And f of b, right, the function value of b is above the x-axis. So this is bigger than zero. Okay. So again, right? We have we have a function, right? The functions. Let's right, starting from a. Okay, and it's ending at, well, it's going up to B, okay? So this function is continuous, so therefore it must, right? It must cross the x-axis somewhere. In particular, this is what we're calling C. Uh, again, because this function is continuous, okay? All right, and so we have a, so whenever we have the situation where you have F of A and F of B, if there's a sign change and the function is continuous, that must imply uh, that the function must have a root, okay, where the root is located between A and B, okay? Okay, so this is our root, okay? All right, so this theorem doesn't tell you how many roots, doesn't tell you how many there are. It just tells you at least there's one, okay? Uh, because our function Maybe our function will, maybe it does something like this, okay? Maybe perhaps, let's say it goes up, and let's say it comes back down, and then goes up again. Something like that, okay? In this case, there would be, uh, we would have three roots, okay? Or maybe, 
Maybe the function does this. Okay. Goes like this. And then back up. Okay. So in this case, we have one root. Okay. All right. So it. It doesn't, so this theorem doesn't tell you how many roots. It basically just tells you, okay, there is at least one root that we know, okay? One value, in this case, the root that is in between A and B, okay? So that's how we can apply the intermediate value theorem uh, for, for determining the existence of a root, okay? And in the next video, uh, this is demonstrated with an example.